previously on the Get Off My Lawn channel. In TIE Fighter, you play the bad guy. Since Star Wars TIE Fighter is and always will be perfect, their task was impossible, obviously. I will maintain until my dying day that the plot and music of TIE Fighter are both superior and that its visuals are more iconic due to the Star Wars license. The predecessor to my favourite DOS game of all time, TIE Fighter. It goes from don't mess this up to we're all counting on you, please help us. Anyway, that, that's TIE Fighter. Because this is gonna smash through that 20 minutes like nothing because it's such a great game. What, this, just being in this menu? <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, TIE Fighter is that good that this menu mm. is literally better than most DOS games, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, the more attentive among you will most likely have spotted that I repeatedly reference TIE Fighter, shoving it into conversations where it clearly doesn't belong at the drop of a hat borderline obsessive love for the gaming masterpiece that is Star Wars TIE Fighter. Here's 10 reasons why TFTC will improve TIE Fighter. Not only was it the best entry of the genre, to this day it is still considered among the greatest video games of all time. I am the sound lead for TFTC and this is TFTC. This is a retro games channel and this is my favourite retro DOS game ever of all time. And uh, he sat in Allied. Do you want to explain to the fine people what Allied is and what it is you're doing? There's a bunch of ties over there. Why aren't they coming with us? Which is the TIE Fighter Total Conversion and that's what we're going to talk about today. Furthermore, the same fans will know that I've been working on the amazing TIE Fighter Total Conversion for X-Wing Alliance. Getting your distro up and running is to, of course, install TIE Fighter. When you care about something, really care, it can drive you to lengths you previously thought were impossible. That's exactly how this soundtrack came about. Avoiding all my TIE Fighter videos, why would you do a thing like that? So here's a video listing 10 of the most glaring differences between TIE Fighter and TFTC. Enemies of the Empire for Star Wars TIE Fighter. Star Wars TIE Fighter! Yes, yes, I know. Like the inexorable passage of time and the rebels destroying any spherical shaped station designed to destroy planets, TIE Fighter at number one in this list was inevitable. That's right, I didn't put it at number one. Followers of my channel will find that to be the biggest shock of my channel's history. The greatest space combat sim of all time is not even the greatest Star Wars game of all time. One of the best examples, of course, being the collector's edition of TIE Fighter. That's because it's simply impossible for me to narrow down a list like that to just 10 or even 20 entries, because there's too many good titles. Which means that the source code of the program is available, and anyone can alter it in any way they see fit. It's to the absolute surprise of nobody that I've made so many videos about TIE Fighter. It creeps into material that's only tangentially related. It's ever-present and unsurpassed, even reclaiming its crown from the likes of Free Space 2. When I first made this channel, it was to talk about TIE Fighter, and I will continue to do so for however long I can keep this going. And now I'm going to shut up about TIE Fighter for just a little bit. And now, the conclusion. There are thousands of DOS games. Most of them are terrible. I play one selected at random with a 20 minute time limit and record it live. This is the result.
is on the verge of success. Soon, peace and order will be restored throughout the galaxy. Even now, our capable forces, led by Darth Vader, are striking back at the rebel insurgents. The rebels are unprepared for our attack. Signal Vice Admiral Thrawn to launch his TIE squadrons immediately. This rebel stronghold has no hope of escape. Commence the attack. Yes, sir. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a very special Random DOS game show. And this is TIE Fighter. Now, you're not looking at TIE Fighter currently. You're looking at a joystick calibration screen, which pops up every time the game starts. Want to avoid that kind of nonsense? Play TIE Fighter Total Conversion by the TIE Fighter Total Conversion team for X-Wing Alliance. Available today. Why did I advertise that? Because I help make the soundtrack and various other things for it. So we centre the joystick and press a button. Move the joystick to the top left. Move the joystick to the bottom right. And this helps the DOS game know where the joystick is going. Enter your name, pilot. Now you'll hear an absolutely beautiful iMuse soundtrack. One of the greatest in gaming history. I'm currently playing this through general user sound font, so it might sound a little different than you're used to. And we have the choice to select a user. Now we have new ace, top ace, or we can enter a new name. Lonnie, right? And my rank is Flight Cadet. But let's just uh, close that and you'll see we're not allowed through that door. The stormtroopers prevent us. TIE Fighter is set shortly after the Battle of Hoth on The Empire Strikes Back, which is the second movie in the series. So there we go. They, rec they recognize Lonnie, the flight cadet, so we'll enter. This is the main concourse. It is a graphical menu, but Rather than looking at all these doors and being very confused, we can actually hover over them and they'll open and you'll get a little tooltip at the bottom and it'll tell you what they are. The film room allows you to view footage. The tech room allows you to analyze craft. The combat chamber is for combat engagements, simulated combat engagements. We'll look at that shortly. You can start a new battle. If you want to quickly continue a battle, you go to that big one at the top. And over here, we have a training simulator, an entirely different mini game. And over here is back to the registration office. So when you're playing TIE Fighter, you might think, well, the obvious selection is the new battle, right? Over there. Not necessarily. If we go to the combat chamber here, you get a nice little animation. 
I forgot to set a timer. <laughs> I think this might go more than 20 minutes. So you have a choice at this point. TIE Fighter Mission 1. And this is the actual Mission 1. Because in the campaign, there is the assumption that you know how to fly a TIE Fighter. You also have the ability to learn other craft. Like the TIE Interceptor, the TIE Bomber, the TIE Advanced, the Assault Gunboat, the TIE Defender, and the Missile Boat. Those are the craft you'll be flying in missions. Now, we could enter the briefing, but let's not. What we're going to do is we're going to go to this lever over here, or as the Americans would say, the lever, and exit the simulator. If we go over here, we get to select the new battle. Let's do that. Now, this is one of the more interesting things about TIE Fighter. You have the option to just say, the aftermath of Hoth. Why would we want to do that? Let's hit next battle. Let's go to the Sepan Civil War instead. Or maybe we'll go to the battle on the frontier and establish a new Imperial base in the Pakuni system. TIE Fighter actually gave you the choice. It was like, there's three separate potential engagements you could be involved in. I mean, if you don't want to do them in order, you don't have to. But we're going to be sensible. I'll tell you what, I'm wrong. Four separate engagements. Look at that, there's Battle 4. Not often I'm wrong about TIE Fighter. And we'll hit Join Battle. This is the briefing room. And you'll hear the music change there, in real time. Now that is a reactive iMuse soundtrack that's contextually sensitive with regards to what you're doing. So we'll head up here and we shall talk to the flight officer. What are our mission objectives, sir? You are to inspect all cargo-carrying vessels that pass through this area. To accomplish this, target each freighter and transport, then fly close enough for your ship's sensors to determine what cargo the vessel has on board. Check your progress on the mission goal screen, toggled by hitting the G key. So, in these early missions, and on occasion, this flight officer will break the fourth wall, just to help the player a bit. He is voiced by the incomparable Guy Siner, who I often call Guy Siner for some reason. He is a uh, British actor, famous for LOLO, but he's been in other things like Pirates of the Caribbean. Excellent, excellent voice actor. One of the best in gaming. So let's find out, what craft will I be flying? You will fly the TIE Fighter designated Alpha 1. You will be the only craft in your flight group. Stay alert for radio messages as this mission progresses. Use your message log, toggled by hitting the L key, to review this communication. Okay, so now I guess we'll try and discern what opposition I'll be up against. Freighter traffic has been above normal in this area. We think this is related to the retreat of rebel forces in the aftermath of our attack on their base on Hoth. Stay alert for rebels hidden amongst the freighter convoys. And in case it wasn't obvious at this point, you're the Imperials. You're technically the bad guys. And TIE Fighter was one of the first games told entirely from the Imperial perspective. But from a perspective that sort of said, you're just doing your job. You just happen to be working for this empire, you know? So, you don't know about the uh, craziness going on at the top. You're, ju you're just one of the pilots. You're just one of the guys. So that's enough for now, sir, to leave that. And you'll see that it helpfully went to the enter mission. Because, after all, we've been to our briefing officer. Where else would we go? The mission map. Let's have a look. One TIE fighter from Alpha, Beta and Gamma squadrons will be out on patrol around outpost D-34. That makes sense, sir. Your mission is to inspect all cargo-carrying vessels as they pass by our station. 
We are on the lookout for rebel forces that are fleeing from their base on Hof. One TIE fighter from Alpha, Beta, and it'll Gamma loop. Squadrons but will be out on patrol if you want, you can D30. stop it so that you can analyze the situation or you can hit the skip button we are on the lookout for rebel forces that are fleeing to skip their base through the briefing we'll exit that using this button and now the momentous occasion where you get to watch Lonnie who is incredibly rusty at TIE Fighter <laughs> play some TIE Fighter so we're already in and I've mentioned this before in the past on the channel. That's important. So we hit T to toggle the targets. And there's a bunch of freighters. You'll notice that my speed has gone up to 100% as indicated in the right corner there. That's because I hit backspace to set engine throttle to full power. And we shall just hit escape at this point. Because that will give us some additional flight options. We can turn up various things. And you'll see that uh, I've set myself to invulnerable just for this playthrough. And we can toggle the mission goals by hitting the arrow keys. So we need to inspect freighter ONTS and transport group data. And then there are secondary goals that are not essential to the game, but you should complete them anyway. There's a little in-flight map to show us where we are, because space is a big place. You can go flying infinitely in TIE Fighter. There's the message log of all the messages and transmissions fully voiced that we received, and uh, damage assessment. We're looking good at the minute. There are your wingman commands. And I don't really use them much. And there's your keyboard reference chart. Now I could go through all this. Let's just get back to the game. So, we're heading full power towards ONCE 1. Let's inspect it. To inspect a craft, you have to go within a certain distance of them. You'll see the reticle has turned yellow. That means I'm in target range for my lasers. Let's just inspect this boy. Okay, he's been inspected. And you? Inspected. And you? Also, oh, hold on a second. Look what that contains. Rebels! We don't want that. So I'm controlling this with my joystick and just flying around and doing my job. So, there are five freighters the there. Are being to board the freighter. And the freighter is being commandeered by the Empire because y you can't just have rebels fly through. So there are the other transports, Data 1 and Data 2, I believe. We'll need to catch up with them quickly. So, let's do that. The distance is in the panel there. And that is slowly closing as you get closer and closer. But we can do something about that if we want. The incoming shuttles have not identified themselves. Hmm, suspect shuttles. Fortunately, we have other TIE fighters in the area to take care of that. We're not entirely the alone. Fighters, of enemy they could cause some severe problems if we went up against them 1v1. There's Shuttle Row 1, and we're getting some combat now. I'll just fly this way and avoid them somewhat. And you can hear, even though... Whoa! Even though we have, like, combat going on, the music has changed to victorious music because we are victorious. And there's a wingman, or, sorry, not a wingman. He's one of the uh, TIE fighters in the area from a different group telling us that uh, the shuttle has been destroyed. So this shuttle's being a bit pesky. We're going to hit enter, and that matches speed with the target. 
So we can just creep up behind it and cause some damage here. You'll notice though, my lasers changed sound. They went higher pitched. That's because energy management is important in TIE Fighter. I'm just going to do a few strafing shots here. Right, and you'll see, I'm out. So I need to hit F9 and F9 to change my cannon recharge rate. I then hit backspace to, you know, go full speed because the cannon recharge rate is linked to the engines. If you turn the cannon recharge rate up, then the engines suffer and you can't go as quick. And the match speed is a percentage. That makes sense. Oh, yes. New craft? Well, I guess we better go look at them. Let's see. Corellian Transport Yander 1. Well, I'm going to drop my lasers, and that'll mean that I can move even faster. If at any point you're somewhat confused and you don't know what you're meant to be doing, you can head to the objectives. Right. Bunch of uh, craft here to inspect. Water. And it's worth noting, TIE Fighter can actually play smoother than this. I have this at uh, 40,000 cycles. And it's not... Uh, it's not perfect, but it'll, it'll do for the purposes of our playthrough. Talos 1. Okay. So, we have two options here. We can continue our scanning, or we can deal with the shuttles. We can see there's, there's, there's war going on here. Let's hit escape and see what we have left to do. 100% of Corellian Transport Group Yander must be inspected. So, we've missed one. And it's entirely easy to do. Let's see, water, foodstuffs... Yander 3? Where is it? It's over Yander. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, so yes, I'm not involving myself in this fight. I'm just uh, doing that. Okay, so now we can help cleaning up. And victory music again. Let's just get a few strafing shots at this shuttle. Don't really have enough laser to cause problems for it. There we go. Gosh, I'm rusty. <laughs> Let's just uh, slowly but steadily break down its shield. And you'll see it's getting closer and further away. It's trying to desperately adjust its engine speed to throw me off the scent. But that's not happening. So we've got one more shuttle. And all this stuff is entirely optional. You don't have to do this. But I do it because it's a secondary objective and bonus objectives that are fun to complete. Some of them can be really unreasonable. Okay. Alright, I'm going to turn my recharge rate up even further. And just sweep in, take out its shields. A few more shots. There we go. Oh, big explosion. There we are. And uh, I believe that's it. There's no other things going on. So let's head over to our freighter, ONCE 3, and see what's going on with it. There go those freighters into hyperspace. And I think that might be it. Is there a transport that's still 
No, I, I think we're good. So, I am going to fly back to the station. Which is slightly upside down, but hey. There's platform D34. And hit spacebar. So, we can review the mission goals screen now. And it says, primary goals completed. Secondary goals completed. We did a good job. And here is everybody's favourite screen in TIE Fighter. Triumphant victory music playing, and you have Flight Officer Guy Signer telling us what a great job we did. What was our main accomplishment, sir? You have discovered a freighter full of rebels trying to escape from their base on Hoth. Excellent work. As we expected, fleeing rebels are trying to sneak through this sector. And in addition to this, sir, what did we accomplish? We captured a freighter full of rebels trying to escape from the planet Hoth. Hoth, a nearby ice planet, was the main base of the rebels. The recent Imperial attack on this base has driven their forces into flight. The interrogation of these rebel prisoners should help us track more of them down. Indeed. And that adds to the complex world of both Star Wars and TIE Fighter, because there's stuff going on that you don't know about currently, and it's all linked. So if we hit debrief, it'll just give you information again. And if you click through that, yeah, look at that. Good stuff. That's enough for now, sir. And we can return to the briefing room to do our next mission. Now, this shady customer over here has appeared out of nowhere, so let's briefly talk to him. Ominous change of music. How may I serve the Emperor? I am a special envoy of the Emperor. In this time of crisis, political intrigue and open rebellion, the Emperor requires special means of communication with his loyal forces. In the battles ahead, I will ensure that his wishes reach those like yourself who have pledged their fealty to him. You will have many opportunities to serve the Emperor and will be rewarded for your efforts. In the mission ahead, locate the rebel officers who are fleeing from Hoth in a stolen Imperial shuttle. We have forces standing by who will attempt to disable and capture this shuttle once you have located it. That's enough for now, sir. So he is basically your secondary objectives guy. And the more secondary objectives you do for him, the more interesting stuff happens. Including additional cutscenes. So, well worth looking into. We'll return to the concourse at this time, because I just have enough time to show you the training simulator. This training course consists of a circular track filled with targets and obstacles. Targets appear as multicoloured pyramids and yellow spheres. If you shoot a target, you'll receive a bonus. Try to reach the end of each level before time runs out. Sure, why not? And we'll do it in a TIE Fighter. Why? No reason. Just first ship to come through. Okay. So we fly up here. Like so. And this is level one, so we just shoot these pyramids. Oh, I missed one. How embarrassing. I didn't get all four. Let's just fly through there and let's shoot some more. I'm just doing this casually. I'm, I'm not actually doing very well. Ugh. Some poor marksmanship from Lonnie. And here's the thing. My lasers are going to run out. Just like in the mission. So I have to decide between speed, in order to get to the end of the obstacle course, or being a random turret and taking out all the pyramids. So I've hit eight targets. It's not great. You know, I'm kind of rusty and leaning forward and uh, not doing a great job. If you want to see somebody do a great job, you should watch Angel's YouTube channel. The home of all TIE Fighter Total Conversion content. By the time you get to this bit, the time left bonus will hit in, and your score will be higher. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, 
obstacle course, Lonnie. If I just hit the laser recharge rate with F9 down to zero, then uh, I won't have to worry. Well, you'd be wrong because there are additional obstacles, as you can tell from those spheres. And they will keep increasing until it is almost impossible to fly. And I have to say, this is a lot jerkier than it should be. So, clearly an emulation issue, but hey. And you just keep doing this. Unfortunately, I just ran out of laser. So I went to shoot that, and I just ran headfirst into it. Which is not very clever, because in these sort of things, your craft isn't invulnerable either. So you can't afford to just go headfirst into obstacles, because they have object permanence. And we're through to the next segment. So yeah, you get the idea. I'll just uh, turn this off, get through it as quickly as possible to see if we can get to the next part. Level 3. The excitement never ends. Oh! And you'll see, oh, additional things. So we, we will leave that for now, I think. Uh, queue in space. So there we go. Training score, 5,250. Not great. I mean, you can just keep doing it and doing it until it becomes impossible to fly. But that's the obstacle course. And I just want to briefly point out the combat simulator here. In this mission, you will learn the basic gunnery skills of targeting, aiming at, and destroying fixed targets. So, in the training, you have entirely unique missions that you don't have in the actual campaigns. And these serve as training missions, but some of them are pretty cool in their own right. You get some really cool additional missions in here. But yeah, we'll exit the briefing and we'll head out to the concourse and I'll give you my final thoughts. <laughs> like I need final thoughts on this one. Star Wars TIE Fighter is the best DOS game of all time. Its campaign is enormous, full of intrigue. I have talked about it in the past endlessly. I'm not going to do that in this video. My showcase wasn't the greatest. I was bang average in all honesty, and this game can run smoother than it did on this machine. I don't know what's going on with the emulation, but it just seemed a little off to me today. Might be because it's first thing in the morning, I don't know. But yes, it's an excellent continuation of Lawrence Holland's Flight Sim series, a superior sequel to X-Wing. Everything is in its right place. You have wonderful voiced characters, exciting missions, amazing combat and a wonderful menu system. It's one of those games where I can't really evaluate it, it's too close to my own heart, and just listening to this music again, being played through a sound font, is incredibly nostalgic. And if you like me talking about some of my favourite DOS games of all time, it does happen every so often. Feel free to take a look at the hundreds of other videos on my channel, and if you like what you see, you can always subscribe. And if you are an amazing TIE Fighter pilot and do well for the Empire, you're probably one of my amazing patrons. Look at those wonderful names. And don't forget, the TIE Fighter Total Conversion exists, is superior to this collector's edition, and is well worth your time. Speaking of time, until next time.